Hello, today we're going to talk about Western settlement of the American West and how Native Americans were affected as more and more white settlers moved into their land. To go kind of back, we're going to study real quick and do a quick review of Manifest Destiny and Western Settlement. A quick reminder that Manifest Destiny was the belief that Americans had the right to expand, and that was going to be expanding into Native Americans' land. And that was done through a, a series of land acquisitions that we had made as a country, the Louisiana Purchase, uh, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which was signed after the Mexican-American War, the acquisition of Texas and Oregon territories, and then also the small purchase of the Gadsden Purchase as well. What we found in the American West was that there was a lot of untapped resources. Some of those had to do with precious metals that were found in areas like California and Nevada. And a lot of those precious metals were things like gold, silver, and copper that are definitely going to make us a more rich nation, but also going to encourage Western settlement to the United States. Gold was discovered in California in 1848, which sent a wave of Western migration as well as helped boost the United States economy. While some of the 49ers traveled by wagon across the United States, others took a steamship around South America, which was a 35-day journey. Once they arrived, many miners would pan for gold, looking for gold particles that had floated downstream. The miners that came to the West changed the demographics of the West. Mining towns were predominantly male, but they did also have other ethnicities as well. In the two photos that show miners on this slide, you can only see one female, but in the bottom right picture, you can definitely see some Chinese immigrants working in the mines. Mining involved tunneling to be able to get to the veins of gold or silver that were in the mountainsides. Tunnels were crudely and quickly constructed, constructed and they were often cave-ins which killed many of the miners. If you did not die in a cave-in, you would be trapped for days in the dark. Working in the tunnels was dangerous and hot. At a depth of 2,000 feet below ground, groundwater that would flood into the mine would be at a temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Nearby towns to the mines, like San Francisco, became hubs for miners. They became a place to spend their riches or their dwindling pennies. A town that was once only 200 residents in 1846, San Francisco grew to be 36,000 people by 1852 and 150,000 people by 1857. The city quickly swelled into the largest and most important financial center, center in the American West. White settlement would severely alter the Native Americans' way of life. Native Americans had established ways of life and culture that would never again be the same. As white settlement pushed westward, the Native Americans were displaced over the years. You can see here in the maps the change in Native American lands. The area that's in red signifies the land that was still held by Native Americans, and the white territory is land that was held by white settlers. In 1850, half of the land of the United States was still held and open for use by Native Americans freely. However, 30 years later, by 1880, after this time period of white expansion to the West, Native Americans are pushed onto reservations and are left with a significant decrease in their territory. The decrease in land severely changed the way of life that Native American tribes had thrived on for generations. Native Americans were nomadic people who were oftentimes freely moving around the United States, usually following a herd of animals that would supply them with food. They had no concept of land ownership and thought that the land was there for all people to use freely and to benefit from. This ideology would come into a severe clash with the incoming white settlers that were moving into their territory. The buffalo were the main herd of the, of the Native Americans on the Great Plains and they were vital for the Native American ways of life. After Native American tribes had acquired horses from the Europeans, they became free to explore the Great Plains and to follow the buffalo in much easier ways. The buffalo are a good example of how Native American cultures used the land and the animals that were, there, that were living on it. When a buffalo was killed, Native Americans used every part that they could. Meat was used for food. What was not immediately consumed was dried and used as jerky later. The hides were used for teepees, clothing, shoes, and blankets. The bones were used for tools and utensils. The buffalo was even so revered that some tribes used the skulls for religious ceremonies. The United States government encouraged the hunting of the buffalo, and the reason being was to get rid of the Native Americans' way of life and to eliminate their food source. White tourists and fur traders began to shoot the buffalo for sport. In 1880, there were 65 million buffalo in the United States, and after the overhunting by 1890, there were fewer than 1,000 left roaming the Great Plains. As white settlers began to further clash with Native Americans, the United States government decided that they would attempt to Americanize the Indians to assimilate them into American society. In 1887, Congress passed the Dawes Act, which broke up the reservations that the United States government had given to the Native Americans, 
The Native Americans who were living on the reservations were given 160 acres of land if you were the head of a household and 80 acres of land if you were an unmarried adult. Native Americans were then supposed to farm this land and become productive American farmers. The rest of the reservation land was sold to the United States government, who then in turn sold it to white settlers who moved into the territories. The best land of the reservation was not given to the Native Americans. It was instead given to the white settlers that moved in. The United States government also went to great lengths to change Native Americans' appearance and assimilate them into American society, and oftentimes they did that through boarding schools. Above in the picture, you can see the transformation that three children made after attending a school to help Americanize them. You can see more about boarding schools in the clip that follows at the end of this lecture on your Google form.